Hey, what's happening? It's your host Tinto, and welcome to another episode of the Feeling Station, proudly brought to you by Shumba Money. Now, if you guys don't know what Shumba Money is, it's a service that provides safe, fast, and easy money transfers from the UK, Australia, Canada, and Botswana to Zimbabwe, the motherland. What makes Shimba Money different is that they won't charge any transaction fees if you're sending any amount less than 200 US dollars. Yep, you heard that right and I'll say it again. There are zero transaction fees when you send up to 200 US dollars and your recipient can collect money from their Newlands branch in Arare or any national building society branch in Zimbabwe. So, what's there for you to do? Sign up on www.shimbamoney.com today and start sending your money. Shimba Money. Trust the pride. Is that a breakup? That a breakup? I think we have a situation right here. On the film station. Mm. Hello, hi, how are you? <laughs> if people knew what we had done two seconds ago, God, they would be laughing at how... <laughs> <laughs> at how... <laughs> does this happen a lot though? Well, it, yeah, it does. It does. Because oh. there's all sorts of devices people use. So, yo, this is not uh, unique to you. This is very common. So we good. Yeah. I'll try I'll try to be okay. So I, I'm I'm so conscious of the fact that we're recording and mm-hmm. and there are gonna be people listening. So I'll be try I'll try and be as relaxed as I was when Listen, we were talking just, to just be yourself, yeah. All right. That's what we like about the podcast. People are so chill, they themselves, so just relax. All right. Okay. Welcome to the Feeling Station. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for having me. For those who are listening to the podcast for the first time, it touches on romantic family and friendship breakup stories that people would like to talk about with a view to give lessons behind their experiences. Now, I hope you find the story that my guest is going to share entertaining, but more importantly, meaningful given everything that we're going to talk about, with the particular focus being on the lessons. So, the podcast is popular for two main reasons. One. I do my best to keep my guest anonymous, which brings me to the fun part for me, and that's the naming ceremony. So I've gone over to North Africa, and your name is very common in Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria. Uh, okay. P- particularly followed by people who are part of the Judaism. I hope I say that right. Um, religion. Yeah, yeah. And your mm. name is Natifa, which is N A T H I F A. I hope you have a pen and paper. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm writing down as we speak. Good. Or if you didn't have one, think about Queen Latifa, get rid of the L and you got Natifa. So it's literally that simple. Yeah. Uh, and that well, means well, clean, wholesome, unpolluted, and pure. Now, is that a good description wow. of you as a person? Um, I would say yes. Um, yeah, um, right. As if anybody would say that they're not pure, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, e- e- everybody's <laughs> gonna say that. Even even <laughs> myself, I will say I'm a pure dude, even though I now got some secrets <laughs> and mud skeletons. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, it, yeah. It, I, I feel like it describes me, though. You know, I'm right. not perfect, uh-huh. and no, no one's perfect. So okay. yeah. So yeah, it's I it's Natifa, exactly. and 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 what are you calling the guy that you want to talk about today? Um, I chose a very special name for this guy, <laughs> mm-hmm. so I'm gonna call him Loki. Oh, okay. If I remember well, yeah. that's uh, that's Thor's brother. Exactly, the god of mischief. Oh, in... oh the god of mischief! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's him. That's... Wow. That's the name I chose to give him. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I know. <laughs> needless to say, he was a mischievous brother, wasn't he? Um, yeah, he was mis I, I, uh, maybe mm. mischievous is not what I would describe it as, but maybe I'd say uh, the god of lies the as well. God of lies. He, yeah. So, so, he, should, he, so shouldn't that then be changed to Lucifer because he's the master of deception? Uh, well, that's too heavy now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit too heavy. So. Okay, also, I think I'm gonna stick with Loki. Cool. Yeah, Loki. So, so the story yeah. today is about Loki and uh, Natifa, and the second reason why the podcast Natifa. is Natifa. Yeah, yeah, Natifa, Natifa. I don't know whichever <laughs> way you want to say it. It's it's okay. it's it's easily uh, an Arabic name, but I don't know how to say it right. No, it's okay. So the second reason why the podcast is very popular is their real life lessons that people are going to learn from the story you're going to share. So what would you like your listeners to learn from your experience with Loki? Okay. Um, 
basically I have um three listens mm-hmm. that I'd like my view my listeners to to take home today. Yep. So yep. the first one um is don't let anyone sell you dreams. Hey. Um, <laughs> you sold dreams, my guy. <laughs> You're building castles uh, in the air, yeah? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm going to buy, I'm going to take you to the moon. I'm going to, yeah, you know, don't don't listen to that shit. Sorry wow. For <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. that's the first lesson. So don't let and anybody sell sec- your dreams. Yeah, the second one. Yeah, the second one is always get into a relationship for the right reasons. Mm. So um, this, um uh, I, I I think this is the most important lesson that I yeah. want people to take home because yeah. um it um I feel like I got involved with Loki because of uh, certain reasons that I'll then highlight in okay. explaining cool. uh, what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the third one is always be your biggest cheerleader and know that your opinions matter. Hey. So yeah, so <laughs> um, this is centered on the whole, you know, esteem the the self esteem of a of a woman in particular. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes we we rely so much on people's opinions and let people make decisions for us, and you know, you, you don't really cheer yourself on enough. So yeah, yeah. that that's the lesson I'd like people to take home. You see, the 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 thing, <laughs> and I want you to take this the right way. When when okay. we talk about opinions, because there's a quote that I love, uh, mm. and and you're saying always be your biggest cheerleader. That's great, but the second part of that uh, lesson is that know that your opinion matters. Now I'm going to share yeah. a quote about opinions. Yeah, okay. they say opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one, but they think the other person's stinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> where I'm going with that <laughs> is oh that my is that I know I know your opinion matters, but bear in mind everybody got an opinion, and opinions are like assholes, and everybody thinks that the other person stinks. So, okay, um, maybe if maybe let me put it like this: yeah. um, for someone who, um, for someone who is so. How do I explain this? Well, let's do it this way. Don't go into the detail because I'm sure it's going to unfold anyway through the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Okay. So, 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 so I was just putting that as a as a little mental mark and a reminder to myself about oh, opinions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So, so let's get into it, um, Natifa. Tell me, uh-huh. tell me where you met Loki and why you felt this is the guy that I want to be with. Okay, so I met Loki through a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my friend, I, I've known this particular guy. Um, should I give him a name or, well, cause it, I'm not going to mention it, him a lot. <laughs> it, 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 well, if you're not going to mention him a lot, it's, it's not worth giving him a name. Okay. So basically I was talking to this guy, friend of mine and yeah, I, I needed, um, assistance with something, you know, uh, work related and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he said to me, um, I, I, I don't think I have the information that you need or the resources to help you with what you need, yeah. but I can give you someone's number that you can talk to. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, cool, cool. It's fine. Then he sends me the number and he also sends Loki, uh, my number. And okay. then, um, as soon as I got the number, I decided, okay, I, I need, my I need help like ASAP, so I'm just gonna text this guy, and then I I text him, and then we talk briefly. Um, we talk briefly about what I needed from him, and yeah, I we then scheduled a, a meeting, a WhatsApp call, whatever, a WhatsApp call, so that we could talk more in detail about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, on the day where we decided to have a WhatsApp call, um, we we spoke and it was purely uh, business. It was purely, you know, Kumfunzati. Um, okay, so how do I go about this and that, that, that. I'm sorry if I'm not getting into detail about yeah, it. Yeah, but that's yeah, cool. It's just, it's just explaining how I met him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, uh, soon after that, we... We kept on talking. 
we kept on talking and this one time whilst we're having a, a conversation like a casual conversation not talking about business or whatever uh he we we figured that you know we might have met each other at some point mm-hmm. you know from we we kind of deduced this from what we what we were talking about and stuff so we then switched to video call over the WhatsApp call, and then I saw Loki, and Loki saw me. I mean, okay, anyway, it's a video call. And <laughs> <Duh>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you know, the moment we uh, out of, we saw uh, each other, uh, out of curiosity, yeah. who thought it was a good idea to do a video call? It was, him. It was him actually. Yeah, it was him because in the middle of the conversation, when we was like, um, I, I feel like we've met each other before. Can I? switch to video call this was him and i was like okay sure and then he switched to video call mm-hmm. and then yeah i saw loki and he saw me and we kind of smiled like we smiled at each other <laughs> um, <laughs> i don't know what that was i don't know whether it was a friendly smile or it mm. was you know one of those sparks or whatever yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But whatever I- but whatever it was was enough to make you feel fuzzy on the inside yeah. So what did you yeah. like about what you saw? Um huh, that's a very interesting question. That 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 is a very interesting question. Okay, so besides the whole talking about uh the business side of things, mm-hmm. you know, I felt like, you know, okay, I can actually talk to this person and I I started liking him before even the video call and I guess once we had the video <laughs> call <laughs> it was just it for me. Like I just fell, <laughs> and he oh, was, I assume he fell you, as well. That's what it was. So, yeah. so, so he kind of fell in in love with with his mind and who he was before you even saw him. So seeing him was 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 the cherry on top of the ice cream. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Okay. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So so, 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 so chemistry has been sparked obviously by this initial video call. Mm-hmm. How did things? Chemistry. Yeah, how did things change? You know, how did they move from business call to mm, okay, this could be romantic. Um. So after the 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 business call, it was um, we would talk almost every day. Um, not deeply, like you no. Know, talking about uh, really intimate stuff and all that but it was more like hi good morning um have a nice day blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. and me also (sighs) okay this is a story for another day but i'm just gonna touch on it briefly Mm -hmm. (laughs) i was i was having my own uh issues like with my with the guy i was dating so he wasn't um he wasn't um showing me um he wasn't appreciating me as much, you know, then look, checking up on me or telling me to have a good day, blah, 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 blah. So when Loki was doing all this, I was like, ah, okay, this kind of feels uh, nice, you know, and he'd occasionally check up on me when I'm at work or, you know, tell me good night and stuff like that. So I, yeah, it kind of grew from that. And then sometimes we would have a very long uh, voice calls like two, three hours long. I need to ask you a question. Yeah, the guy that you're going to talk about uh, on a separate conversation, you, you uh-huh. described him as the guy you were dating, and and I want to be clear, I've got dating in the right context. Yeah, dating, might... but with the view to say you could be talking to him, you could be talking to Tinto, you could be talking to Loki. Is it that type of dating, or you guys were exclusive? We were exclusive. So your boyfriend and girlfriend? We were boyfriend and girlfriend, but it was complicated at the time. So for the purposes of my understanding, I'm going to say that the guy that you were in a relationship wasn't giving you attention. Yes. That Loki starting to give you. Exactly. That is risky. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was that, that that is already very risky. And I know you don't want to go into the detail of this stuff, but were you unhappy with your guy at that time? Um, yes, I was very unhappy. What were you particularly unhappy about? 
we had a lot of problems in our relationship. A few to mention would be cheating and lack of communication. Like the time when I started talking to Loki, we mm -hmm. hadn't been speaking for about two months. So um, how were you in a relationship? Uh, we we were in a relationship because we didn't we didn't break up. I mean, we weren't talking, but we were still together because eventually I knew he was going to come and you know reach out and we'll start talking again and stuff. I don't want to go into the weeds because I know we're talking about Loki, but yeah. some of these things are important for me to understand. Mm. The person you're with in a relationship, you're in a relationship with. Jeez, tongue twister there. Um, <laughs> you were unhappy because he had cheated, right? At some point, yes. You are having a conversation with Loki about business, which is great. Mm -hmm. You already starts playing with your mind before you've seen him. You've seen him. You like what you see. You're now having two to three hour conversations. You are already in the realm of emotional cheating. Why hadn't you let the other guy go by this point? Um, because I had been in a relationship with him for very long. Therefore? I was, uh, I was so, I was too attached to him. Like, th this wasn't the first time that he had cheated. I mean, we had been together for like five years. So in, in those five years, um, there was a lot of cheating. There was a lot of fighting. Both. Um, I, I get that. But you are now setting the scene for you doing the same. So if you didn't like him doing it, why are you about to start doing it yourself? That's where my question is. Um, I don't know. I guess I thought maybe things would change. And I... Things would change for who? For you or for the guy you were with before? For you? Um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to... <laughs> think of okay. I I I I felt like things would. Um, I thought our relationship would get better, you know. Besides the whole um, lack of communication and cheating, how would a relationship get better when you are introducing somebody new to the equation? Um. The reason why I'm asking these questions is it's important for us to be truthful with ourselves. And, and that's part of the reason why this podcast is great because we have an opportunity to, to undress and get real. So what this sounds to me like is you are not getting attention. You are in a vulnerable position. A guy starts giving you the attention that you like and that you feel you should deserve and you pay him attention. But you're also running the risk of falling into the same category that the guy you were in a relationship was. And it also give in the same, at the same time, gives you the perfect opportunity to say, Hey, do you know what? I'm getting attention from another man that I enjoy. This is confirmation for me that I shouldn't be in this relationship with you. So I got to let you go. Yeah. So were you too scared to let go because you had been so emotionally invested? Yeah. That you felt you'd be losing out on something you've planted so much time in. And you didn't have the confidence that Loki was going to give you exactly what you're looking for. So you're kind of testing the waters to see whether you should stay or leave. Exactly. I, I, I felt like, I felt like I was too much of a coward to tell him that, you know what, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I guess in me receiving attention from Loki and maybe having something, uh, solid in mm -hmm. quotes low key mm -hmm. would then give me a reason to leave and also like i i highlighted in one of the lessons i said always get into a relationship for the for the right reasons i felt i felt like i i had dependency issues right so the whole fact of you know 
okay, fine. Um, this guy that I've been dating for five years is not giving me what I I want or what I need. You know, I'm not brave enough to to leave him and be by myself. So I'd rather, you know, have someone else give that for me, give that to me, mm-hmm. and then I leave my relationship rather than I leave and then you know have that time to myself mm-hmm. you know where I I heal etc cetera, etc cetera, and then find someone else this leads me to a very important question uh and 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 again I'm really trying to not to I'm really trying not to detract too much from the Loki situation but you're saying a lot of stuff that I can't ignore so one of the things is you said was um, you felt that this guy was not giving you what you wanted. So here's a really simple question. Give me three things that you wanted out of a relationship. I wanted I wanted him to communicate with me better. Um, we had a lot of inconsistencies in our communication and mm. it wasn't, yeah, that kind of uh, created loopholes for, mm-hmm. you know, other people to to come into my life and, you know, just give me the attention that I needed through communication. Mm-hmm. What else did you want? I also wanted him to, to... Um, but bear in mind, th- this is not what you wanted him to do because that's up to him to decide what did you want as an individual, which could be, which could be given by anybody. I could have been in that pool of people that could give you mm. that in the same way that your ex could have been. So I'll assume the first one is you wanted somebody that was a good communicator. Yeah, someone right? who's a good communicator. What what other quality did you want? I want you to focus on the qualities that you wanted as an Atifa. Okay. Not what you expected out of him as an individual. All right. Um, I wanted someone who... Someone who was... Um, I don't know if this is the I'm going to use the right words, but mm. anyway, I wanted someone who was present. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that simple. You wanted somebody present. Yeah, I wanted someone who was present and mm-hmm. involved in 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 my life and mm-hmm. in also making me a better person. Okay, yeah, I, I, does that make sense? <laughs> it 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 does. Except that for as long as we depend on somebody to either make us happier or better people, we have a fundamental problem. Because when they don't do that, we put the blame on them. And yet ultimately God gives us willpower and the power of choice to decide what and how we do things. So somewhere within this conversation um, about Loki, Mm. did you expect him to make you a better person too? Um, I, at the time, I, 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 I wasn't really thinking about that. Mm. I wasn't thinking that deep about what was going on with me and Loki. Only later did I then, you know, um, mm. yeah. And the third bit, what is it that you wanted, um, in a partner? So you've told me somebody who communicates great, somebody who's present, involved, and somebody who would make you a better person. What's the last thing before we we head back to the two two three hour conversations with Loki? Okay, um, the last thing I want mm. in a partner is someone who is. <laughs> I hope this is not like a common answer, <laughs> mm. but anyway, I want someone who is um, loving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I'm trying not to rip, to to use the guy that I was in a relationship with as a reference, so yeah, I'll yeah. just leave it at that. I just okay. wanted loving, cool. yeah. I, I, yeah. Interesting, um, because loving is really down to what you're exposed to. Um, for for me, someone doing something loving is somebody doing an act of service. For me, you are loving character, yeah. Um, and that's down to you know what I grew up with. And if you have a chance, please listen to episode 40. Okay. And the lady the lady in that episode understands loving as strife. So her dad used to beat her mom. Her dad used to beat them up as kids. And you'd say, if I don't do this to you, it means I don't love you. So they grew up with the definition of love being abuse. And a loving person would abuse. Mm. So what you are asking for here when you say that you want somebody loving is you're pretty much asking someone to give you love in the way that you understand it. 
Yeah. Which which just opens you up to a whole heap of different versions. And if they don't match up, you could really be missing out on something good. Just putting it yeah. out there. You don't need to comment on that. Okay. So, no, that's fine. <laughs> so, so, so I'm going to take it back. And, and now this makes sense because... The very first thing that you said you you wanted in a guy was somebody who communicated better. And here mm-hmm. Loki was having a business conversation with you, having a video call with you, and now having two, three-hour conversations. He is communicating and he's also filling your requirement number two, which is somebody mm-hmm. who's present and involved. Mm-hmm. And 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 I guess this that this attention that you're getting actually speaks to your love language because you want somebody who is loving, so you appreciate quality time. Exactly. So all of the boxes are being ticked with Loki and everything starts to feel right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So did you at any point have two boyfriends? Um, no. At, well, in this case, yes. Okay, no. No, the answer is no. Right, you got to be sure whether, <laughs> whether it's a yes the or a no. But no. what am I working with? Did you at any point have two boyfriends, Loki and, and the ex? No. So why did you say yes before? Uh, because eventually me and Loki were made it exclusive. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah, eventually. But yeah, at the time we, we were just talking. So at the point you made it exclusive, you had, you you had now broken up with the other guy. Yeah. Are you sure about that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I had. Okay. Cool. I was brave enough to I was brave enough to tell him that you know what I I think. This is not working. So juices. <laughs> but that's because you had a cushion yeah. though, isn't it? You knew you knew that it was safer on the other side now. No? It was it was not only the fact that I was talking to Loki, but you know, like I said before, mm. there was so many issues in our relationship that um then made me tell him that it, it can't work anymore. Yeah, it was not low key yet. I really do need to have a second session with you. Yeah. Because 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 you were you were in this relationship with this ex for what five years? Five years. And you suddenly had the balls to tell him that I don't want this no more because you had something mm-hmm. else available. So you could have told him within two years or three or even four. I wasn't brave enough. I thought things would change. But be in our relationship. And for me, this is where it feels to me like you only were brave enough to do it because you knew that Loki is available to you in the way that you want him to be. Well. I, I don't know. You'd have to persuade me otherwise. In a way, yes. I'm not denying that, you know, me talking to Loki uh, kind of uh, had an impact on the on the decision I made. But also at the time, like I said, we weren't talking for a good two months. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in those two months when we were not communicating, right. I had time to really think about our relationship. Right. Okay. And I then I realized, you. you know what? I, I I really don't deserve this. I even I spoke to my my family about it because my family knows him. And that's a story for another day. Yeah, you know, I, 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 this is yeah. definitely an episode for another day. But it, it, it's yes. consumed so much of our of our low key experience, uh, and, and and that's fine because it sets the scene mm-hmm. for me to understand a lot more about what's yeah. happening about Loki. But yeah, we'll we'll come back to him. Yeah, and I also spoke to my friend about it. She never really liked my my ex, so um, yeah, it it kind of helped me to be brave enough to make that decision. Yeah. So yeah. even before I started talking to Loki, mm. I was still considering, you know, um, breaking up with him. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So two, three hour conversation with Loki. Uh, are they making mm-hmm. you feel fuzzy and excited and everything under the sun? Sorry. Can you repeat that? I didn't get that part. <laughs> 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 so, you're, so you're having these two, three conversations with uh, two, three hour conversations with with Loki, yeah. yeah, and and you're feeling all fuzzy and happy and warm on the inside, right? Yes. So, yes. at what point did you then decide, the both of you, that let's make this an item? That's a very good question. It was, <laughs> it was not something that was. 
Um, uh, it wasn't something that was official. Like he didn't really ask me, you know, that can you please be my girlfriend or whatever. But it it was just, you know, we started. Uh, we started. Um, you know how you 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 change from calling someone by their name and then call them with you know those other names <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> other names like what? I know it's stupid. I know it sounds very no, stupid. No, 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 no. It's it's not stupid. It's it's quite endearing because when you get to that level, you 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 find someone to be special. But I just want to know what kind of stuff you started calling him. What did you start calling him? Uh, my name's Achonoma Ziva. Okay, babe, or love, or dear. And also he would and he would also say things like, you know, I really care about you and. And I would, I, I see myself being with you long term, mm-hmm. so, stuff, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, for me, my heart just melted. And yeah. what would you say back to him? Um, nothing. Like I would just, okay, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, I would say, yeah, I do see myself with you as well. Um, I think, um, this is going good so far and i'm really enjoying this um we we vibe and and that, that's a good thing so you guys started using these endearing words and as far as you're both concerned that was um sealing the deal to say okay we're now boyfriend and girlfriend yeah so at what point would you guys celebrate your anniversaries anniversary hmm. how would you know this is our anniversary uh, I I didn't really think about that. I, I I don't know, man. How long were you together? Uh, three months. Oh, yeah, okay. three months. So I wasn't really thinking about. That. I didn't mean to laugh like that, but <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> no, it's fine. Anni- it's okay. You know, anniversary didn't even happen. Yeah, it didn't even happen. So it leads me to the next question: When did you guys break up? Like, like how far back? Um, about. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it's quite fresh. So what? April twenty twenty two. Yeah. This is <laughs> mad. <laughs> <laughs> this it is was, this it, is fresh off the mill. It, it's very fresh. Ah, um, okay. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm gonna cut to the chase. In all of this talk that you guys are talking about, hey dear babe, uh, you know, I see you with for the rest of my life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Had you guys been intimate? No. No, we hadn't been intimate. It was over the phone. So the thing is, I was in a different country. Yeah. I was in a different country and he was in another country. But I was supposed to move to the country that he stays in. Mm -hmm. So it was more of, you know, I can't wait to see you, you know, all that jazz and and. You know why would yeah. he be the one to move to where you are? Why did you need to move to him? Okay, so we stayed in the same country at one point. Yes, but then he moved for work. So at that point that you guys were in the same country, how fresh was your relationship? Days, weeks? We started talking when he had already moved here. Okay. Well, I'm saying here yeah, to the, to another country. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we started talking. Yeah, then, and then I also was moving for work in the same country. So your so relationship started off long distance. It started off long distance. So you wouldn't exactly. have the time. You so that's why you were not intimate because you didn't get the chance to be with each other. Yeah, we didn't. What about phone sex? Ah, tinto. <laughs> it's a question. Did, did you guys do phone sex or you didn't? Um, I don't know. Hey, what what would you define phone sex as? What's phone sex? I'm not about to do role play here. It's going to be very weird, <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay, let, um, let, let me. I'll simplify it. Did you guys ever exchange nudes? Did you ever see him topless? Did he ever see you topless? Did he ever see anything that is private to you? Oh, this is embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes. yeah, what does eh, but what does eh mean? Eh means yes, right? Yes, it mm-hmm. means yes. Yeah. 
It means yes. So, um, so there was a measure of intimacy as far as you guys could because you're not in the same place. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I'm asking this question is intimacy is very important in solidifying what people have. Well, at least for me, it is. Yeah. I can't speak for everyone. So if you guys are taking it up a notch, it it's adding to this definition that you guys have of being exclusive, even though you haven't said it to each other in, a, in an official capacity. It's just been inferred by your guys' behavior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah, just, yeah, you know. So I'm gonna move it forward a touch. So you guys have spoken over the phone. You are now exclusive, inferred by how you guys are interacting and behaving with each other. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And and we... then what went wrong in all of this? Right. Okay. This is what happened. Ten two. Mm-hmm. Um. So. In us talking, I think um, a month later, um, after we, you know, we started talking. Yeah. Uh, he over the phone one day he was like, um, "Do you know everything about me?" And then I'm like, "Huh? What do you mean?" And then he's like, um, "Did you talk to your other friend, the one that gave me his number?" did you talk to him about me at some point like do you know everything mm-hmm. and i'm like uh, honestly no um of course yeah i did you know look you up on on social media platforms etc cetera, etc cetera, but you know i just i, I didn't find anything chiri you know worth to ask you is there something that you need to tell me mm. and then he's like um Okay, I can't like say it over the vid- a video call, uh, but I can text it. And then I'm like, uh, do you know what? Just say what you want to say. Yeah. And you've already put me on the edge of my seat. Can you just say it? And then he's like, no, let me text it down to you. Actually, let me cut the phone and then text it to you, and then I'll I'll talk to you. Mad. You know. This right? is this is and already like, giving me like really bad vibes. What is it that you can't say over the <laughs> phone, and you need to and say like, in I words? Hope, I hope, <laughs> I hope this guy isn't married. <laughs> that's that's just like what I'm thinking. Mm. Yeah, and that's exactly what he sent me. He said, "I'm a married man. Mm. I'm I'm married. I I have a child as well." And yeah. Did he suddenly start saying this because he knew that you were going to join him in the country that he is? Yes. And it was also getting like we, our relationship in quotes was growing, was becoming more, you know, we were talking more every day and stuff like that. So. What time of day would you guys talk? In the evening. When he'd come back from work. Always in the evening. Consistently, yeah, we talk in the evening and for a good three hours. Like we would not talk less than three hours. Did his wife work night shifts? Um, he, apparently he was having problems with his wife as well, according to him. So I would have never guessed that he's married because um, he wasn't talking to her. Um, they weren't staying together actually at the time. They were not staying together, so. He was staying alone, um, and the wife and the child were staying elsewhere. So that's how we would then have long conversations. So they separated. Like of- yeah. So. What with a view to, I don't know. I, I guess that's an unfair question. I was going to say with a view to go, like divorce or get back. But then, if you separated, you're trying to find that mm-hmm. answer anyway. So I can't answer. Mm-hmm. I, I can't ask that. Mm, yeah, he. Mm. They were still together, but you know their communication was bad as well, according to him. So they wouldn't talk to him. Yeah, I want to hear how this was broken down to you. I feel like I'm missing a juicy part. So, so my man says to you, "Look, I have to text this to you because I can't tell you over the phone." And then over that text, it tells you, "I'm married and I have a child." Mm-hmm. Uh, how how did you receive that news? That information? How did it make you feel? Um. I don't know. I felt indifferent, I guess. I kind I I knew that's what he wanted to say and I mm, I've I've been in situations where, you know, 
a guy will approach me and will start talking and he will show interest and then mention that he is married to me. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, whatever I do, like I, I, I was saying, no, um, this is not going to work or whatever. So it, it wasn't really a shock for me when he said that. That's because you've been desensitized to it because you've, you've had a few guys come in with the same message. Exactly. And also because I really liked Loki. So <laughs> I was already brainwashed. Me, me, meaning what? Meaning it didn't matter that he had a wife and a child? I was like, this is embarrassing, but I was actually, uh, I was, I was willing to put that all aside. Yeah. I don't know what to say about that because you want somebody that communicates good. If he needed to be with his wife, he wouldn't be able to communicate with you. I'm just saying what you told me, you look for in a guy. Number two. Mm -hmm. You want somebody who's present, somebody who's involved, and somebody that will make you a better person. If he got back with his wife, he would neither be present, nor would he be involved, and his chances of making you a better person are even more limited. And then last but not least, you wanted a guy that's loving. So yeah, um, loving, again, like I said, is very broad. As far as he's concerned, loving for him could mean giving you attention. And for you, it could be receiving attention, and that's it. Okay, so let me explain why. Mm. Okay, I, I I heard your question, so I'm going to explain a bit further. Yeah. So, yeah, he told me that he's um, he's married. And he's, he's sorry that he couldn't say it over the phone. Um, you know, because uh, he... Yeah, he, what was his reason for that? Uh, he just kept saying he's a coward. You know, he, he's not brave enough to say it over the phone because, hey, I, 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 I'm so attached to you and I, I don't want to, you know, he, honestly, his reasons were stupid. But what I got from whatever he said was he, he was the coward to say it. Did you call him out on how stupid they were? He said it himself. He said he's a coward. He's, he's too cowardly to, you know, say it over the phone. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, okay. But me, because I was, uh, you know, so <laughs> in deep with my feet and everything, you know, I was like, ah, you know what? It's, it's, it's okay, whatever. So, fine. I now know that he is, um, he's married and I take a day <laughs> to think about it and, you know, I decided, you know what, I'm, um, I, I will ask him the necessary questions that I need to ask him about his marriage. You know, questions like, uh, so why are you looking for, like, why are you talking to me if you know that you're married, et cetera, et cetera. So I did ask him his que- these questions and his response was, our relationship is crumbling. The communication is terrible. Like, same on my side. The communication is terrible. And then he tells me the story of how he met her and, you know, how they ended up getting married and stuff like that. And then he said to me he wants to leave. He wants to leave the marriage. Right. And then I was like, oh, okay. So are you in the process of getting divorced? Are you, like, what are the action actions that you've taken? to to execute you know the whole the to officialize the divorce and then he's like everything ha- is in the process um i haven't really started yet but i'm i am going to talk to her and then i was like okay okay it's fine so I, I just hope that when you do, you know, tell her that you want a divorce, it is not because of what is going on between me and you, but it is because of, it's something that you want as a person. Mm. I hope it's something that you have been thinking about, just like what I said about my side. You know, it was... Uh, it was because I was thinking about, you know, the breakup 
you know, because of the events that happened in my relationship and also what was happening with Loki. If I based my decision on what was happening between me and Loki only, then it would have been stupid. You know, I have to I have to call out something that's been bugging me at the back of my mind since you told you that it was married and you were okay with it. Yeah. When people make marriage vows, they say to have and to hold and to be faithful. Mm. So you have your ex who was unfaithful. You have Loki who's about to become unfaithful. And you're saying to me that's okay. So my question to you is, did you really have a problem with infidelity? Or you only had a problem with it as long as it wasn't benefiting you? <sighs> That's a very good question. I I am not sure, to be honest. Um, I could help you answer that. Ba- just based purely on what you told me. Mm-hmm. As long as your ex was being unfaithful, you were unhappy because it wasn't benefiting you. Loki is not about to, but is unfaithful because he's married, but he's having a relationship with you. But because it's making you feel what you felt and you've already described it in a way that's to say that you had lost your mind. He was benefiting you, so you were okay with it. And the problem with that is that it's a selfish reason to be in a situation with someone. Yeah. Because remember, you had a need to feel somebody present, involved, and make you feel good about yourself and feel loved. And this is what is happening right now. But you're not thinking about the wife. Even though they're separated, she is still a wife. Mm. So why were you not thinking about the wife? I don't know. I... (sighs) To be honest, I, I, I didn't really care. Do you, um, do, do you want to be a wife one day? Yeah, I do. How would you feel knowing that your man is spending two, three hours with some other woman and making her feel great? I'd feel terrible. So why do it? Um, I made the wrong decision, Tinto. I'm not proud of that. And... I, that's why I, I made one of the lessons, um, uh, for this, uh, particular podcast to be always get into a relationship for the right reasons. I think, I think that lesson is easily the one that is very prominent. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't want to badger on about this because we all make mistakes and, and that's the beauty of being human Mm. in that, uh, by virtue of the fact that Lucifer was chased out of the heaven and the fact that right from the Garden of Eden, somebody made a choice to do what God didn't want makes us prone to doing things that we don't like by default, by nature. It's embedded into our DNA. Yeah. But what is great is that we have an opportunity to make that right. Mm Mm-hmm. But we can only start making that right for as long as we are sure within ourselves what it is that we want. And and that's why I, I asked you about the three things that were important to you as Natifa, as an individual, not what you expected out of people. Hmm. Because once you have something that is of value, if you have something that you can't go a day without thinking about, you cannot give up on it because you make it your reality no matter the cost. So if you wanted somebody that communicates really well and doesn't sabotage that by having a wife, you would dismiss him and say, look, I want a good communicator. You can't give that to me because you have to split your communication between me and your wife. Mm -hmm. And then if you're very pure and confident about wanting somebody who's present, then you're not going to give this guy attention because he's going to split his presence between you, his child and the wife. wife. Mm -hmm. And then if you want somebody who's loving in the way that your love language is, make them be that person without having to split it again between their child and their wife. Mm. 
So, you know, never mind that we all made, you know, that you made a mistake. We all make mistakes. But what you have right in front of you right now as we speak now, and bear in mind this is only two weeks old, is the perfect opportunity to set that boundary. To say, I want a guy that communicates. I want a guy that's present. I want a guy that is loving in the way that works for me this way. If it doesn't, they deserve zero of your attention. Mm. I realized that late, <laughs> fortunately. So, what happened when he told you that he has your wife? What eventually led you guys to stop talking? Um, well, that wasn't the reason why we stopped talking. Mm. Um, we kept talking and in our conversations, he would occasionally mention things like, would you be able, would you be able to, um, withstand the, the rejection and, um, the downfalls of, being the other woman say oh my if I would goodness to this guy low that. key yeah Lord and of mercy do do you get what's happening here mm. Loki is asking you to settle Loki is asking you to take the bullshit Loki is saying to you indirectly I have a wife who I'm separated from and I'm suspicious of that and I'm very likely yeah. to go back to so that I can be with mm-hmm. my wife and my child. Exactly. And know that I have you as a backup plan. That's all he's asking you. That are you okay yeah. being a side chick? Yeah. Yeah. That's basically what it was. And and you said? I stupidly and ignorantly said, yeah. Natifa. It was a very stupid answer. But I feel... I feel I just said that just so, you know how someone asks you a question and they expect a certain answer? Yeah. Yeah, I I felt like it was one of those where he he wanted me to say yes, but in the back of my mind, I knew, you know, this, this is not it. But then, you know. Let's talk about something you mentioned about being a coward. Mm Mm-hmm. So you you felt that you were not strong enough to tell your ex that this is it. You know, it's it's time to call it quits. This guy is telling you, aren't you to be my side chick? And you have the perfect opportunity to say, I'm not cut from that cloth. I want nothing to do with it. Um, But instead you say, yeah, that's cool. Because, you know, that's what he wants to hear. Do you feel the same um, cowardly feel and approach coming to life in this case? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do. I don't want to um, delve too deep into this, but this is starting to feel more deeply rooted than it is between Loki and the ex. Uh-huh. Are you generally a soft-spoken, laid-back person? Yes. I am. Are you generally hesitant to speak your mind and speak your truth and say it as it is? Yep. Exactly. Are you afraid of disappointing people based on being honest and truthful to yourself? Um, Yes. And I'm also afraid of, you know, after I have, I have um, decided to be truthful to myself and, you know, spoken my my truth to someone it will eventually then bite me in the back and you know i'll look like the fool at the end of the day so yes and all this well how does it make you feel as an individual happy and happy it makes me feel sad (laughs) so the point i'm getting at with all of this is you're doing everything that would make you a sad individual as you've described Bear in mind there's a guy out there who may be looking for the very same criteria that you're asking for, which is to be a better communicator, someone who's present, involved, and loving, and someone that can make me a better person. How much of that can you give to that man if you are feeling as sad as you are, based on the fact that you're afraid to be real with yourself? It it makes it difficult, right? 
It is. Um, the point I'm getting at with this, and I and I tend to steer away from trying to give advice because this is you just sharing your story. But you have yeah. such a great opportunity to just take a step back and think about what it is that makes you happy instead of focusing on the things that you have to do and they eventually make you sad. Because I have certain requirements and if you're going to do what I want at your expense, you will always be the unhappy person. And the longer that you are an unhappy person, the more difficult it becomes for you to be your true self. Mm. And everybody wants someone who is 100% real and genuine. All people want from relationships is to feel safe. That's all. And if I'm able to make you feel safe as Natifa in the way that you understand yourself, you will love me more. And if you make me say, uh, feel safe in the person that I am as Tinto, by nature, I will love you more. All of it, everything about relationships has to do with making the other person feel safe. But you yeah. can only do that until and unless you understand yourself 100% Acknowledge the things that make you feel uncomfortable. For instance, for you, it feels like confrontation and dealing with things head on make you uncomfortable. Be honest and vulnerable about those up front. And I feel that's that's that that's step one to 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 just becoming a, a greater lover. Yeah. So you accepted to be a side chick, and then what happened? Um, then, um, he stopped wearing his ring, like he would wear it. Okay. The first time when we started talking, I, I didn't see anything. And then after he told me that he was, uh, married, I also didn't then see anything. And then one day when we we're on a video call, I noticed a wedding ring. And then I asked, um, okay, how, how, how are things home? Mm. And he said, ah, they're still bad, blah, blah, blah. You know? I'm like, okay, so uh, you're wearing your, your ring today. That's interesting. And then he made some excuse say, saying, um, uh, someone was bothering me at work. So I, excuse me, so I just decided to, you know, wear that so that I can chase them away. And then that's when I started, you know, having my, like all the things that I was shoving in the back of my head started, you know, mm. coming to light more, you know. I then began to realize, okay, so I, I don't think I would... I don't think the situation is okay. This is me talking to myself. The situation isn't okay because already um, I'm, I'm a bit triggered by, you know, the fact that he's wearing his ring again. It means that whatever is going on on his side with his wife, you know, yeah. they're working on it. And I, I, I don't want to look stupid at the end of the day. Mm. I, I don't want to put myself in a position where I, where I'm heartbroken and I've invested myself in something that I know will not yield anything at the end of the day. So yeah, after that, I, I just, I, I just thought of that and, you know, I, I, I have a problem of leaving things unattended to or not addressing certain things. I will notice that, okay, so this is, what's wrong this is what uh, is causing abc but then sometimes i just leave it at that because mm. i feel like i'm i'm i feel like i'm afraid to deal with things and to confront things and make the necessary decisions so that you know at the end of the day i'm happy mm. so i just thought of that and i you know shoved it and then um Fast forward, I'm now in the same country as this as this guy, mm -hmm. and we plan to meet. Mm -hmm. And like a, a couple of hours before before I, I I get ready to leave, 
so that you know we we meet at a mutual place mm -hmm. he sends a message to me <laughs> surprise surprise yep but now when like mm. okay i got i got pachatiagi and it i got on the chat nigona is typing this, this, the, the, know. The, the, you the, know the, that anxiety that you're going to see eh, this person is typing a very long yeah, message yeah chances are high that it's going to be a bad message right mm, mm. and then i was like ah okay maybe what butt texting or something i, I don't know <laughs> butt texting then, <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's doing I've, something I've, I've, heard of, and <laughs> I've, I've heard about a pocket dial but i've never heard about butt texting yeah <laughs> okay oh uh, gosh okay anyway then you know i put my phone aside i'm finishing up what i'm doing mm. and then i just pull i drop the screen mm -hmm. the, the the my screen so that i just see a portion of what was being texted and then you know it was this whole message like the first paragraph was talking about how how he loves me and Mind you, he told me that he loves me and I hadn't said it back because I wanted, you know, I wanted to do it like face to face, you know, and after some time, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to do it face to face, basically. So he's like, um, you know, I really love you and I, and I care about you, blah, blah, blah. And I, I didn't read the entire message. I didn't realize that, you no, know, this is a very long message. And I'm like, mm -hmm. ah, okay, at least, at least this message is not as bad as I thought. Because, you know, yeah, usually when people type this long, it's a bad message. Mm -hmm. So the such and I'm finishing up what I'm doing. And then I open the entire message. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the first paragraph, um, I really love you and I care about you and Whatever you know, the jazz that you guys say to women, hey, you, you, you make all my inhibitions fall, blah blah blah. You know, all I, that I, I never told the woman that she makes all my inhibitions fall. Uh, I don't know, but so, I'm sure so, you so, said so, something along those lines. Yeah, buddy, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a bit too intense for me. I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and and and, and, then, and, and you know, just as you say that, um, you know, I know he's saying all of this flowery stuff, but have you heard the saying that anything before a but comes for nothing? So you can have somebody say, "Yes, I'm not mm. mad at you, but I'm not trying yep. to be racist, but I'm not trying to be insensitive, but anything before that but counts for nothing." Exactly, I literally cancelled out what that first paragraph. So what's the and rest then of it saying? The true message the true message then was like, mm. but I don't think we should, uh, I don't think we should continue the, this part of our like relationship. We can still talk, you know, um, since at the, at the beginning of, you know, getting to know each other, we spoke business and stuff. We can still do that, oh, but wow. you know, the romantic parts and, yeah, I don't think we can do that because I'm failing. Now I felt like this was a confession. I'm failing to balance the time that I spend talking to you and talking to my wife. Of course, because um, it's a hell of a lot of admin doing that. Yeah, but listen, Tinto, Anka Chigara Ega at the time. He was, he was living on his own at the time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, at the time. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, what else? We should cancel the, you know, the whole meeting up and stuff. I think we should do this uh, now before things get bad. <laughs> or before I get caught is what you were trying to say, big man. I guess so. It, it, then... it's, it's not even guessing. So it's exactly what it is. He was, he was basically hmm. putting in your place so that you don't mm -hmm. text him or call him at inconvenient times that would make it impossible for him to spend time with his wife and his child. It's that exactly. simple. Very simple. So what I did after that, um, I just looked at the message. I read it twice and I put my phone on the side and a whole load of emotions started flooding. <laughs> I felt, I felt stupid. I felt like a fool. I felt very angry. Um, I was very emotional mm. about that. And yeah, it took me about three hours to respond to that. 
And my mm. answer was very simple. I just said, okay. I just said, okay. And I ripped the bandaid off. I chopped, I, I deleted uh, the number, everything that, you know, was related to that particular person. Yeah. To Loki. But yeah, it was a bit, it was painful. But yeah, um, I, I think I'm over that now. And um, like you highlighted a couple of uh, things that I mm. need to work on. Mm. I'm working on those things. So yeah, that's my story. That's incredible, Natifa. Um, there were a few difficult moments that you struggled to respond to certain questions. But but hearing you say what you've just said, at least for me, this is just an a stranger and an outsider looking from the outside in, feels like you're gonna spend a decent amount of time just reflecting on some of the things that you may need to do differently. Mm-hmm. I've spoken yeah. about this book several times, and I'm sure listeners are tired of it. But if you get a chance, um, get an audio book or the physical copy of a book called The Four Agreements. And all the, the four re- agreements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The four okay. agreements. And and what it does is it allows you to take a step back and understand just how you've been built as a person. So there's something called domestication. And all it is is all of the influences that come into your life from your friends, your family, your mom, your dad, your church, your school, your pastor, your priest, your best friend, everyone. They all chip into your life. You pick and choose what you like, and then you form an opinion of who you are and what things should be. Off the back of that, when somebody says something that doesn't align with you, you take it personally and you want to reject it by nature. Mm. And the moment you do that, you create a lot of internal conflict and drama within yourself. And then off the back of that, you start forming opinions based on assumptions and not fact. So when you add all of these into the equation, you get what you described earlier, which is being sad. It, it's, a, it's like a mathematical formula. It gets you to that point. And once you get to a sad state, you start accepting some bullshit like the bullshit that Loki was bringing down your way to say, I want you to be a side chick. And then when you say that's cool and you move to where he is and you want to start doing your side chick duties, he then flips another <laughs> switch and say, uh, no, Natifa, nah. I actually don't really feel like doing that. So you got to take care of your own shit on your own. Yeah. So not taking that step back just opens you up to emotional abuse, which we all don't deserve. Nobody deserves to be abused emotionally, which, which I feel is worse than physical abuse. Because if you slap me, it'll hurt me for a good 30 seconds. But Mm. at some point, the pain will go away. But if it's in your mind because it's an emotion, it's going to stick for time. So please, 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 if you can, grab that book, read it in your leisure. Yeah, sure. Or listen to it in your leisure because I think it's going to fuel what you need right now. And now is the perfect time when you recognize, oops, I've made a problem. But if you try and fix it based on how we've been domesticated as individuals, you're going to just run in the same Mm -hmm. cycle and you won't break the cycle at all. Already yeah. you've mentioned that you felt like you were a coward with your ex and you were kind of cowardly with this guy. You you just need something external to come in and say, hey, how about this? So that could be mm-hmm. that option for you. Mm-hmm. And um, your, your um, lessons really came, came, um, came to life. And I'm just wrapping this up. Your first one was don't let anybody sell you dreams. He obviously sold you dreams until he realized that this shit is more real than just games. And now you're in the same country as he is. And then yeah. number two, always get into a relationship for the right reasons. I think we've exhausted this. We know exactly why you got mm. into this. And then last but not least, you said, always be your biggest cheerleader and know your opinion matters. All of these have been very relevant, Latifa. And yeah. I just want to take this moment to say thank you very much for sharing all of these. And I'm sure the, uh, the yeah. guests who've been listening have learned something that is of value from what you've just shared. Yeah, thanks so, for having me. Yeah, you know, so whilst you're feeling pretty crap about this because it's only two weeks old you have genuinely just made somebody realize that oops i need to deal with my own shit separately so take Mm -hmm. this as a positive thank you thank you thank you so much for your contribution to this welcome yeah right 
You've been listening to another episode of the Feeling Station podcast. I'm your host, Tinto, and I will catch you in next weekend's episode. Peace. Tell me what you're feeling. Tell me what you're feeling. Tell me what you're feeling. Now that it's over. Tell me what you're feeling. Motor, no talk with it. Zero, am I? Zero, am I? Love is a fire. Rudoy motor, no talk with it. Zero, am I?